Up until this point, my practice before recording an episode has been fairly minimal. I would play one or two levels mainly for pleasure and, and just to reacclimate myself with the gravity, with the, the mobility of Pac-Man. But <laughs> before recording, before starting this recording, I grinded levels. I played Pinky's Revenge. I played Blade Mountain, Avalanche Alley. I went and speed ran the first boss of the game. Got it. How do you like them apples? Or, I, I guess, they're cherries. Can you tell I'm nervous? Well, you should, because this was the cutoff point for me as a child. This was the point where my childhood self could not progress any further. And it wasn't until a few years later, when I entered my teen years, that I had the hand-eye coordination to beat this world and eventually the rest of the game. In my opinion, this is the hardest world in Pac-Man World 2. And this episode, after going through a very, very solid ice world, we're going into the volcano. This area, I don't want to say it's a blank slate because I do remember quite a bit, but this is a similar scenario to, uh, what was it, uh, Ice, Ice River Run, where I didn't play it that often, and so I was pretty rusty on it. Hello. Uh, hi. You're, you are statues. You know, uh, I started, I had a failed start to this, uh, recording, and I don't think that was there. Future Pal, you can rewind a bit and just see, but I don't, I do not think these statues were here. I don't think any of them were here. That's kind of odd. I do know that sometimes games can have a few rendering errors that on a cold boot, they're worse. I, I know Breath of the Wild, it, it doesn't just span like old games. Okay, we need to sidle this. New skill being shown off here. We haven't really needed this technique. But certain games, it, it's a, an age-old problem. They perform worse. Camera? C camera? There, okay, that'll work. That'll work. Uh, can I just run up this? I feel like that'd be easier. Yeah. Are you gonna fall? Yes, you are! Let's run back. Yeah, they perform worse on a cold boot than they do on uh, after the game's been on for a while. There are certain techniques in Breath of the Wild that actually don't work when you first boot up the system, and it has to be warm warmed up for a little while for certain things to load and work. Okay, uh, these enemies, I've been meaning to talk about official names for enemies for quite some time, so let me pause the game and pull out the booklet. These are Pukas. I don't know what their attack is. Can you hit me? Do you hit me? Oh! Okay, then. You, you, wow. Oh, did not expect that. Did, I, I vaguely remembered that. I thought, you know, don't these things, like, aren't these things gruesome? Whoa! Okay, there's not even a cooldown. Okay, these things, I suddenly got a new respect for Pukas. Their legs go everywhere. That's dark. Look at their legs. They pop! Wait, what did... That one just kind of... Squished. These things are... I wonder if I could use these as, like, a momentum boost. Because they did blow me quite a, quite a ways. Uh, you fall that way? Meaning I can do this. Oh! I am... Yes! Oh! I, that, that was a dune in life! That's, I don't know why I thought, oh, this is a natural option for me to do. Okay, I would have been sad if I died from that. That was sick. Can I make that? I can't. Did I get an apple? I did. Uh, pack dot trail somewhere? That I feel like is a secret, but I know it's not. Grab, wait, where's the pack dot trail? Oh, it's over there. Oh, this was required, I think. Uh, camera. Yeah, poor camera. I, I know, I think I know what Vince Jolie was talking about when he mentioned the camera, or the levels not being very camera friendly. I had this in the back of my mind when he said that, because there are some, there are some tight spaces. Okay, 
fall. Made it. And grab this. There are some tight spaces in this world that are not camera friendly at all. And I, we're going to be discovering that to my frustration. This is okay, though. Pukas everywhere. I haven't really talked about tokens. A bunch of tokens. Why are there so many tokens? I haven't really talked about the official names of the enemies, and this is a topic that I, I might have saved for an actual episode, like a topic of the day. This is risky. Jump! I can't really see. I can't really see. Camera, camera, camera. Uh, I need that box over there. If they, I don't mess with them, they won't mess with me. Let's do that. Go over here. Avoid the pack dot power pellet. But the the book of this game. Oh hey. Uh, mm, I have to cut this out. Yeah, this is gonna be a long episode of two levels. So I'm gonna show it off and then cut it out. Whoa, hello, lava. Hot lava. Lava's everywhere. Look at all that lava's. You notice this? Look how these ghosts are so scattered. Look at, uh, what's his face up there? The, the red one? Clyde, I think? He is so laggy. What are they do? What's up with you guys? This is cake. They're so, s why are they so slow? Did I accidentally bug the game? I guess we get a nice look at the, at the level up close. Yeah, I don't know what's up with these guys. They're, they were just kind of dumb. They were really dumb. Okay, I was talking about the booklet. The booklet is back from the days where booklets had work put into them. Uh, and the cool thing about this booklet, I'll talk about this more later. Um, it has some things that you don't actually I mean, you would never know otherwise, and I I'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, I can't reach that with a rip roll, I don't think. Uh, let's grab these guys. I don't know how strong these currents are. Oh, no, they're not bad. They're not bad. But it has the official names of the enemies, and so far I haven't really talked about that because a lot of the enemy names have been really boring. Like, um... Oh, hello. Oh, it shoots them. Okay. That is a puka plant. I was looking at the thing, but a lot of the names are really boring, like bat or ghost, things that I, I wouldn't want to talk about. And and as I come across, at some point, I will talk about the book. That will be a topic of the day. Oh, it's changing them? Oh, it's like sucking the life out of them. Man, this is gruesome. It, the cool thing is, is that's actual AI. Like, look at it missing. It's not... It's not the AI working together, it's actually the AI versus itself. I- that's... That's something I never would have appreciated as a child. Look at that, like, look at that. It is actually missing. It is the AI versus itself, not the game being like, okay, oh! Okay, I, I need to stop stalling here. This- this puka plant is... Deadly, surprisingly. I don't think it can shoot things this far. It better not. Oh wait, did I get that box? Well, I can't go back for it now, so I don't remember what was in the box, but I got it a second ago. Uh, that's a, kind of a ramp. Can I? Oof. Yeah. So, uh, as a child, you're probably you're probably waiting. Where, saying, where's the point where uh, you couldn't get past? It was actually that very first room, the very first room with all of the falling platforms. I could not get past that as a child, and and so we were actually further than I got as a child. Now, I I have played this far. Okay, I slid off. I have played this far. But I don't remember it very well. I did play this far, and I just never got this far as like a little child on my first attempts at the game. I got as far. I remember having a lot of trouble with Inky's blower, and then reaching that first room and just not being able to play. And it wasn't even a. It wasn't even a factor. Oh, uh, actually, I mentioned this earlier. Let me jump up. This is a really good point where walking is useful. You just do this, and walking is is really nice. You just have to make sure that you're tilting down and not tilting with the the C stick because that actually does not turn Pac-Man. But this this is useful. So if if someone wants to pick up this game and has trouble with this, it's really nice to walk like that. As for me, I'm just gonna jump it. What does it do? It spawns you. You give me a life. Is that it? Is that worth going back for? I don't think it is. I already got the Galaxian, so I'm, I'm just gonna move on. 
And honestly, at this point, the levels might get so long that I might have to be doing one an episode. I, I have thought about that, especially considering it would, it would, uh, it would, yeah, it would increase the, the duration of the Let's Play, that's for cer certain. Suddenly I couldn't talk. Oh, that was stupid. I should, yeah, I should do this. All right, getting up. I'm hoping that in this, in this lava world, that I can get myself into the mojo. Oh, goodness, one of these. <sighs> We're gonna have to backtrack. Yeah, I was hoping I, I can get myself into the mojo of this world because I I actually have been trying to custom customize my um, my controller just so that it's people stop mistaking it for their own. So I, I'll show a picture on screen. I custom ordered the these orange buttons and they're really sweet. Oh good, I got a melon. That'll probably have a box thing later on. Uh, what happens if I press this again? Nothing. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah, I customized my controller, and it, it's really angry looking. I, I'm i not sure how much I like it, because I was hoping that it would be spice orange, but that thing is, is kind of scary looking. And it's first party. It just looks really cool. Uh, I don't have a good view. Oh, that's... Oh, I thought that was a huge platform really far away, but no, the perspective's... These. I remember these. I don't think it'll spit at me as long as I'm this far away, but I have the book lit out. I should look up this thing's name because these things are going to be a staple. These are called Stonies. And I won't read you the description because it would kind of spoil what it does. Uh, let me get a good view around. We're finally getting into a lava area. Oh, It... I need to stay on the move. Yeah, I need to stay on the move. I don't know if I can kill it or not. I think I need... I think I need... A, a, a power up. Ah! Can't kill it. Can't kill it. Did I kill it? Did I do it? Oh. Uh, it'll do that. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm not sure if I... Oh, I died. Oh, wow. I, I died, died. Those enemies are going to be fun. I think I actually do need the, the metal power-up in order to kill them. So for now, I'm just going to avoid Stony and hope that I don't get stoned in, in the head with his powers. Yeah, I'm just going to avoid that. Some cool fire effects. I mean, I guess they're not too cool. They're they're sprites, but honestly, the sprite work in this game isn't that bad. I, For example, uh, as a kid, I never really realized that... A, the pack dots are sprites, B, the fruit are sprites, and, and just a lot of the things are sprites and they just, they look good. Oh, ow. Oh, oh, that's what that does. Oh, okay. That's fun. Yeah, you can see, this this area is not very uh, hospitable for a child. You have plat- oh, okay, I guess I just can't stay on platforms for too long. I'm not sure if this fire has active AI or if I've just been- Unlucky? No, I think I'm just unlucky. Uh, let's get over to solid ground, and I want to... No, I'm not doing what you think. I just want to get a look. Okay, I don't think I missed anything. I think this room was fairly innocent. Oh, uh, we have a left. We have only a right path. Never mind. This area just keeps going on and on. There's another checkpoint! This area just keeps going on and on, and... Weird perspective is kind of scary. Uh, can I... It's kind of weird how the camera is locked in a lot of areas. I don't know why it's locked in here, of all places. The developer... You know, thinking about it, and, and Vince Jolie's words about the the desi the uh, camera developer banging his head on the wall, I, I just realized how much of a very active role he must have had, because most games, you don't think about it. They just make a good camera... Uh, they have good cam... Oh, no. I need to salvage... Ah... <sighs> But they, they need to have a good camera design, and then they're good. But in this game, because the camera's locked so often, the camera developer had to make workarounds in, like, every level to make the camera work. And it's it's not something you really think about. Because we're used to... Uh, I'm just going to use the example of... Uh, I'll use the example of... Uh, of uh, Mario Sunshine. Because that game has, I think, a really good camera, especially for its time. And... 
especially when it comes it, uh, when it comes to walls. And that game, you don't really have uh, like there are very few points where the camera takes an active role of being like, okay, you can't move the camera here. Instead, it's just a good system from the get-go. Oh, this is this is fun. I feel like I could shimmy on that wall. I think this, this area is like, this is the gateway. In fact, this this level is the gateway of saying, okay, we've been trying to hammer into your thick skull that you need to be intentional with your movement. As I said in the, uh, in the, the whatchamacallit, in the control video, the, the topic of the day from last episode, they, they really want you to be thinking about what you're doing. And this is the level where it says, okay, if, if you're not going to do it, then you're not going to progress. And as a child, I I never got that. I, I just thought, okay, I can just be good. But no, you have to think, especially here. I have to consider my pathways, consider what bridges I am literally burning, and consider the timings of these platforms. I'm gonna go over here. Oh, this one do. Come on. Yes! Yes! Wow, yeah, that was that's hard. This level is objectively hard, but objectively good. I think if you're good at this game, if you can think about like on the fly stuff where you're rev roll, you're using a falling platform to rev roll, this game is fantastic. I feel like there's a place to go over there, but also I think that's just scenery. Okay, let's, let's leave. <laughs> The names of the Pac-Man ghosts are confusing. So confusing, in fact, that the developers of this game cut them wrong, too. Who's that piloting Blinky's frog? It, it, it's Clyde. Clyde is piloting Blinky's frog. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Since even the devs couldn't get their names right, I looked up their correct names, and in the process I learned something new. I learned that each ghost has a personality. They act differently and chase Pac-Man in different ways. That may not come as a shock to many of you, but what comes next probably will. After learning this, I rewatched the opening cutscene of this game, and I was shocked by what I saw. Pinky the Pink attempts to stay in front of Pac-Man. That personality can also be interpreted as wanting his attention, which explains why Pinky is often portrayed as having a crush on Pac-Man. Of course, in the cutscene, she would be spying on him while he sleeps, dismembering an innocent flower in a game of he loves me, he loves me not. Blinky the Red is aggressive, chasing you even when you have a power pellet. Of course, he plays the role of the troublemaker, being the one to suggest that all of the ghosts pick the golden fruit in the opening cutscene. Clyde the Orange is my favorite, because he's a dimwit. He misses the point and wanders the map in a random fashion, and that is exactly what we see here. The best part is that he also misses the point of being a ghost, because he's, well, I was going to say he's scared of his own shadow, but in this case it's the shadow of this tree. I will give poor old Clyde a pass on this one though, because not only is this tree mysteriously absent in the morning, but it's also levitating above the ground? Yeah, hopefully we won't be encountering any evil trees later on in this game. Teru Iwatani, the creator of Pac-Man, claims that Inky the Blue, Inky the Cyan, I, I honestly don't know how to say the word Cyan, and so in my notes I just wrote Inky the Blue. <laughs> anyway, Teru claims that Inky the Blue has the same exact behavior as Pinky, but strangely the code doesn't support the creator's claim. Inky is unpredictable because of his technicalities in the game's code. Without delving too deep, I will summarize and say that Inky looks two tiles ahead of Pac-Man, and then draws a vector from Blinky past that point. His decisions seem random, with his routes taking him on wild rides through the map, but that's because his movement is based on Blinky, not necessarily on Pac-Man. This blew me away because we actually see that that technicality in the opening cutscene. Not only is his movement entirely dependent upon Blinky, but because of Blinky's actions, he goes on a wild ride through, through the village. It's, it's crazy that, that the cutscene is that deep. 
And I figured that since I, I have gone through and talked about the ghosts' technicalities this much, I, I might as well round that out a little bit. True Iwatani said this, To give the game some tension, I wanted the monsters to surround Pac-Man at some stage of the game, but I felt it would be too stressful for a human being like Pac-Man to be continually surrounded and hunted down. So I created the monsters' invasions to come in waves. They would attack, and then they would retreat. As time went by, they would regroup, attack, and disperse again. It seemed more natural than having constant attack. The ghosts have three behaviors. Chase, scatter, and frightened. Why, why do I feel like I'm talking about Five Nights at Freddy's? The first two modes alternate when an internal timer tells them to. This is how the difficulty of the game is determined. The scatter timer will get shorter and shorter, and the chase timer will become longer. As you can see, the timers also get more difficult as a single level progresses. The game also leverages difficulty by increasing Blinky's speed once an arbitrary pack dot milestone is met. This, <laughs> for some reason, which I think has been lost to time, is known as Cruise Elroy Mode. <laughs> they are also programmed to never reverse their direction of travel unless they are switching from Scatter to Chase or vice versa. Experienced players will watch the ghosts and take note of when they pull a 180. I've even found myself playing around their AI as I play through the Galaxian levels. For example, Pinky always targets an area four tiles ahead of Pac-Man, so I'll often turn towards her, knowing that she'll chicken out and take a different path than the one I'm heading on. It's really turned a simple arcade game that I used to grow bored of after a few rounds into a complex mental process of micro-decisions and AI manipulation. I respect it a lot more now, and I hope that you do too. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I don't get yelled at for ending the episode here. Yeah, I know at the beginning of the series I did say I was going to be doing two levels per episode, but I'll be honest and say that this is a post-commentary outro, because if I were to have included just the two levels that I recorded in this session without the topic of the day, the episode would have been around 37 minutes long. And that's far too long for the benchmark I, I set for this series. I, I want these episodes to be around 25 or fewer minutes, not 37 minutes. So I hope you'll understand if I end this episode early, and next episode will be a little bit shorter, but then we'll hopefully get back on track with the final two levels of this world. Thank you guys so much for watching. Join me next time where we head into Volcanic Panic on a Tuesday or a Thursday. See you guys then.